that's one of the differences in people who make it in, especially in entertainment, mm -hmm. is that the rejection, it keep, they have to understand that it's just constant rejection. It's constant. There's going to be way the more rejection than, than acceptance. Yeah, yeah. Way more. So what do you do? How do you handle it? Well, Hey, it's Kara. Welcome back to Really Famous, where you get to know your favorite celebs on a super intimate level because I was a therapist and that's how I roll. Right now, you're going to get to know Maurizio Martinez on a personal level as he tells us all about how he knew he just had to make it big in New York City and what he did to make it happen. And it's probably going to surprise you. So let's watch. For Westside. That was my first neighborhood when I moved to New York. That feels like, it feels like home to me, the I Upper West Side the upper when I'm West there. Side. I love Columbus Circle and up because I used to go to AMDA, um, which is on the, the Ansonia building mm -hmm. on 73rd and Broadway. And I used to live on 85th and Broadway. So I, every morning I would walk from 85th to 73rd uh, down Broadway. So that's like it's a nice walk. Yeah. Yeah. How can you not? How can you top that? Like when you first moved to New York at 18 you from can't. Mexico and that's like your morning walk every day right. to go study dance and acting and music and singing and like yeah it reminds me of i think i had heard al pacino once talking about when he was getting ready for the godfather role mm -hmm. i think and i think he was living in the city on the upper west side okay. and he was just trying to figure out and he would just walk down broadway i think he said from like the upper west side just all the way down wow downtown wow um just thinking figuring that's a it great out. walk yes it's a great city to to be an actor like because not only because of the, yeah, the Broadway's here and the, just doing those sort of things. Yeah. I go, I, I usually go to Central Park to walk and That's like right to I, learn lines sometimes. Like I, I go and learn lines. Yeah. Or learn music. Like I. Okay. Well, walk yeah. me through that. <laughs> what do you do exactly? I, well, if it's music that I have to learn, like uh, I will play it in my, in my ear pods and go to Central Park and just listen to it and just maybe sit down by a bench and just stay there. I would stay there for like two or three hours. If it's a scene, I will take it with me, whether it be electronically or I print it out and I walk and I just walk, whether it be cold or, or warm, it doesn't matter. But I, I learn a lot of my lines in Central Park. I only live th four blocks away from Central uh -huh. Park, so it's a blessing. So, but I promised myself that if I was going to live so close to Central Park, I might, I, I have to use it. I have to. That's my garden, you know, like, yeah, so I'm very nice privileged, you know, so uh, it is a privilege to live so close. Yeah, so, so it's good that you take advantage so go. of it. Like, yeah. why not go? Yeah, like, I run there all the time, at least four times a week. But I go there a lot just to be by myself and mm -hmm. sort of like focus, meditate, pray, concentrate. I like I talk to the city sometimes there. That's that's what I do. I talk to the city. You know, yeah. Tell uh, me about the talk. Well, talking to the city is like well, this is the city where I've always wanted to live. I moved here when I was 18 mm -hmm. and I was here for two years, two and a half years. And then I had to leave because my visa ran out. So I had to go back to Mexico. So New York was always like uh, a destination that I wanted to come back to as an adult and succeed in and like fall in love in mm -hmm. and like be an adult, just like be a working actor in New York. Um, and I had little tastes of it whenever I would come and do something and then go back. But I was like, oh, I, I want to go back. I want to go back. So when I was going back and forth, auditioning, hoping to get a show, but still living in Mexico City, I would go to Central Park mm -hmm. and just sit down and be like, talk to the city and be like, OK, OK, New York, it's time. Please open the doors for me. I'm ready. Come on. We're a match. Come on, let's do this. And it works. Yeah. New I York believe in listened. it. Yeah. It's, you know? Well, it's like that, yeah. you know, <laughs> some people it's might think like, oh, look, he's crazy. Why is he talking to the buildings? But I'm like, yeah, I, I talk to the city a lot, a lot. I do that. So do you say it out loud? Like, oh, I'm yeah. Talking about? So you do. Oh, yeah. So if somebody sees you like from down the path they know or whatever, I'm crazy. people know I'm crazy, though. <laughs> it's a good thing. But you do. So you say it out yeah. loud, but it works. I, you know, I have to tell you, the more I so I was a therapist before uh -huh. I started this. So you know, when I would hear things about like, oh, you just have to think positively and things like that, I would always kind of yeah. brush it off as like, okay, that's fine. But really, it takes a little deeper work to figure things out or right. like to change things, right? But I do think the more, the older I get and the more, the more open I am to other ideas too. And I really do feel like this concept of that kind of thing where it's like you're putting it out in the universe, yeah. what you 
you know it's a match. Yes. You know it's for you. So it's like you have to really like send that and out there it out and you manifest it. Yeah. And I do think that you're manifesting it because it's come because of what you're doing. Do you know what I'm yeah, saying? Like I, I think as the therapist, that's the side of it that I really believe in is that you're putting it out there because you believe it so then you're acting on it to make it happen well, imagine what i was doing i was taping a tv show in mexico city and getting auditions for broadway shows at the same time and flying from mexico city on the red eye to new york and arriving at five in the morning or six in the morning going straight to the the audition and then w it was snowing because it was like february march april this was 2017 and then auditioning and then i would go do my ritual like talk to the city and then get in a taxi and go back to the airport land in mexico city at like 10 p.m go to bed and then in the next morning continue shooting the tv show like that's how committed i was that's what know? i'm saying yeah that's exactly that's what how I'm committed saying. i was so yeah. you knew it and you let yourself not like instead of being like oh that's just a dream um, i don't want to jinx myself no. like those are the statements i'm always like none of these statements like you have to if you see it for yourself you believe in it and you do it and you put it out there because you are going to make it happen and now that i'm here yeah like that, that i'm been here for almost five years in this city four and a half years i remind myself constantly like you are where you asked to be now that I have a green card in yeah. two years, I can become a citizen. Like I'm, I can work in whatever field I choose to, but I mean, I chose performing of course, yeah. but I live where I wanted to live in the apartment that I wanted to have, like w working with Broadway caliber people. Like just like, I got to pinch myself sometimes because mm -hmm. this, this career is filled with um, self doubt mm -hmm. as, like, as we said. And sometimes we don't, remember all the blessings that we've had or that we that we have to this moment i just had a friend of mine stay at my apartment for a month she's a mexican actress living in miami working in like the hispanic tv world uh that i also work sometimes at and she was just listening to me for one day talking to my manager about a reading and a workshop broadway this and the contract blah, blah. i hung up and i was like in the moment and she was just like getting ready to go to the gym or whatever and she said do you realize like the life you have and i'm like what do you mean the life you have like you're living the dream mm. literally i just listen to you and i watch you and i like don't forget that mouth just like look around and it's like you're absolutely right but sometimes we need other people mm -hmm. to tell us yeah you know? uh to yeah. remind us of how lucky we are and and because we are i i am living the life that i chose to live yeah it's not perfect but i knew it was not going to be perfect that's just how life is but i'm living in the city where i wanted to be i'm an artist like that's yeah. my job that's my profession that's what i do like i'm a new yorker like so it's like and you're probably she's right and yeah. she's probably you're helping her too yeah by like emitting that kind of like joy or of life yeah well now know. she's moving to new york oh see <laughs> see yes. And that's what, again, she's thinking of you as the people that we're talking about that we, you know, we were talking yeah. about before of like you're. And she's moving to New York. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I love that. I'm like, yes, do it. Do it. Do, do it. it. Jump in the pool. Yeah. Um, do it. And it, it feels good in the yes. pool. So I'm all for that, too. Um, so there, there is a lot of rejection, though, right? And like, just getting back to what you were saying. Constantly. So there's a lot. It's constant. And I do. I mean, I face a lot of rejection, too, just because as I'm whatever, whatever I'm doing here, there, or everywhere at this show, too. So I get it. Um, and I think that's one of the differences in people who make it in, especially in entertainment, mm -hmm. is that the rejection, it keep, they have to understand that it's just constant rejection. It's constant. There's going to be way the more rejection than, than acceptance. Yeah, yeah. Way more. So what do you do? How do you handle it? Well... It depends on what the rejection is, who is it coming from, and what part of my life I'm at, what stage I'm at. You know what I mean? Yeah. Because it's not the same to be rejected um, when you're, I don't know, super in love, like in your birthday party, and you know you have another great gig, and like you're, you know, you're, mm -hmm. you're like in great health, in great shape, everything is wonderful, and you got rejected for a project, but you have another one lined up. Like, so it's like, oh well. But when you're rejected and you're on your own and maybe you're depressed and you have financial distress or like maybe you're 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 sick, like maybe you're like have a cold or like not feeling good. The rejection sometimes hits you way harder. It just depends. 
because we're so volatile, yeah. you know, as, as performers, as human beings, we work with emotions. We're we're an open canvas of of emotions all the time. So it depends how you are, really, mm -hmm. you know. But how I am, remember, like Finding Nemo, like Dory, the the fish that like has a short term memory. Yeah, Ellen to That's how right? I am sometimes, yeah, yeah. you know, because because I would let's say I I didn't book this show. Oh, oh, I was gonna go. I was um I booked Evita, which is one of my dream shows as Che in the West End. And I was gonna move to London for six months in 2020. I was I was uh, fly I was supposed to fly in April. So of course the pandemic hit, and everybody thought it was gonna be like oh, only one month, and then theaters will open back up. And then when we realized that that was not the case, and then we finally got the the letter um, from the producers and everything, and it was hard because it was like oh man, I really wanted to go to London yeah. and like do Che play Che and. Evita with Andrew Lloyd Webber and like, oh my God, like I was bummed, you know? Of course. And of course I was bummed for like maybe a month, you know? But then you sort of forget about it because you get another you get yeah. another project and you that's how we are. That, that's how I am, right. you know? One rejection or one no for like a project, like I didn't book, I don't know, let's say something. Uh well then you get another one and you get excited for the next one and yeah. you're like oh well now i gotta focus on this audition so now you put like all your ba your eggs in that basket for like a week while you're preparing the audition and that's how we live mm -hmm. like and especially after the pandemic when we had to teach ourselves how to do self tapes and we all got the ring light and we all have to like now that's how we do auditions you know so so we got good i think we got we perfected um the way in which we deal with rejection and just keep keep focus keep one of them will be a yes yeah. just keep going just you know just, just keep, keep going, going. Well, i mean not all of them are gonna you're not gonna book everything of uh -huh. course not like of course not not even barbara streisand booked everything you know what i mean like yeah i love reading that i love these stories like i i, I you know? it gives me such pleasure not because i have like schadenfreude or whatever and i like to see people suffer but it does it's like i love reading about all these super successful people who yeah. had like hard knocks and they went through some tough stuff i mean barbara streisand who's like my idol of course like yeah. come on you cannot get more rejection than that like and, absolutely and look at her uh, yes. Just people like that. That I mean, people didn't believe in Al Pacino. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You yeah, know? People like, didn't believe in everybody. You know? Everybody. Bette Midler. Like, oh, the, 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 it's, yeah. it's endless, the list of yeah. people that were like, oh, you're never going to make it. And look at them. They're mm -hmm. huge stars. Um, mm -hmm. But a lot of people so. stop when they hear, you know, like a lot of people don't keep going. That's yeah. the problem. I just did a, a, a reading for a workshop uh, for a Broadway-bound musical based on Joey Mangano's life. Uh, the inventor of the miracle a mop, and I think it's a wonderful story. Uh, Jennifer Lawrence did the movie. Yeah, wait, did, did, isn't and it also the iron? The yes, travel she iron? did the huggable. Uh, uh, the, no, the yes, the right? travel iron, and also the huggable hangers too. The 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 hangers with the hangers with the velvet. Oh, yeah, oh, but, really? But also the traveling iron. But the traveling iron. Just gonna jump yeah. in with a little story about the traveling iron. So uh -huh. I got one, and uh -huh. I live for the traveling iron. It is. <laughs> the, it's her. a steamer, right? <laughs> yes. But I, then I went to get. So my son was going to college. I'm like, you're gonna need one of these because yes, it's the course. greatest, and you're gonna need a little travel one. But you couldn't get one anywhere. I think there were some lawsuits. I think it may have burned some people. Oh. Yes, I know it's very disturbing. But I still use mine because okay. I love it. <laughs> Don't get, burned. <laughs> right, don't get burned. So anyway, we were doing the workshop and there's this beautiful scene wh uh, where um, I'm not going to spoil the show. That's not even uh, a show yet. But um, where um, the, her mother tells her something that she wanted to be a dancer. Um, and Joy tells her, why? Why didn't I know this? And she said, because my mother told me I wasn't any good. And I listened. Oh. So. Yeah. Don't believe that. No. Like, don't listen to people. But how like, hard when it's your parents and or your that. significant other sometimes, yeah. or your your teacher, your like I don't know, your the priest in the church you go to, like any any it could be anyone. Mm -hmm. Don't listen to them. Listen to the ones that believe in you. Listen to the ones who say you can do it. Because there's gonna be a million people that are, are gonna say you can't do this. Don't yeah. don't move to New York. You're too old. No, people are really talented over there. Don't do it. You're, don't, do you have an accent? Don't do it. Like, you're never gonna what? You're never gonna be on broad. Like, what? 
I really hope everybody is listening to you, you right have now. to. Yes. I'm a four time cancer survivor. Four time cancer survivor. Okay, I didn't so li- if I would have listened to the first doctor I went to, I would be dead by now. I probably well, really, like literally. What did the first <laughs> well, doctor the first tell doctor you? I went to said, you're going to lose your bladder. Like literally, he was an older military, uh, slightly homophobic doctor. And he was like, nope. Me and my then partner were, were like shocked looking at him and listening to him because he was like, nope. No, this is too bad. No, looking at the x-ray like, no, I think you're not you're not going to be able to keep your bladder. No, like just so negative. And I was like, I need a second opinion. So you thought that right away? I need a second opinion? Yes. Well, good for you. I, I said, nope. I, that's good. But that's who I am. That's, that's part of my you are, personality. But you're lucky that you're, that's yeah. not just lucky that you have that in you, but that's exactly more reason I'm like, to. I'm going to go a, a, get a second, a third, yeah. a fourth. But by the second one, I was like, oh, this is way better. And the third, I chose to. I, and that's the doctor that saved my life. And. 11 years later, here I am, four-time cancer survivor. Okay, so what happened? What yeah. did you, do you mind me asking? What, no, ha- what I, did you, okay, yes. Yeah. So we do talk about these things next in the next part of my talk with Maurizio. I put a link to part two in the description below. So you can just click on that. In fact, there are other parts of this interview too. We talk about his experiences with cancer, four times he had it. And it also led to depression and anxiety and a real low point in his life. So he tells me all about that in the next part. And later we get into juicy details about his four exes. So get ready for those and I will see you in those videos. Thanks for watching. Give it a thumbs up if you like this one and by all means, drop a comment. Talk to me. I'd love to hear what you're thinking.